<laughs> hey guys, it's Brie. Um, I'm sorry for the crappy lighting, but it's really exciting because it is raining and 64 out. Um, it's been really, really hot and gross, and I'm so excited that it's raining. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I figured we would talk about Rachel Pollock's Unquenchable Fire today. Um, this is an interesting book, to say the least. Um, I did see that Joe over at Final Blow Joe hauled it. I don't know if he's going to do a review, but if he does, I will try and link that below, um, kind of retroactively when he posts it. Um, this is different. Um, so this is written by a woman named Rachel Pollock. She is like a divination and tarot card expert, I guess, and has written a bunch of books on that. Um, <laughs> and there is... <laughs> I, I was not surprised to learn that after reading this book. So this book takes place in kind of an alternate universe version of our world. Um, and over time, what has happened is humanity has gone through like a kind of like a magical age. Um, it turns out that there really are gods and they take place and have their like modern miracles. And there's, there's very much a presence of the supernatural in the world that is created in this book. Jenny is the main character um, and she is kind of in a bad place in her life I guess I would say. She's just gone through a divorce, she's like working a fairly menial job, she's living in the suburbs and she doesn't really like the suburbs. Um, she's part of what's called a hive which is like a, a group of people who bind their souls together spiritually in a sense. Um, and she didn't really want to do that. She did that because her ex-husband decided that he wanted to and kind of convinced her to move into this neighborhood. Um, so now she's stuck with these kind of overly, overly entitled and like invasive neighbors who she doesn't really like. Um, <laughs> and she's just like, she's not, she's not having a good time of it. Um, and so they have this big day, this big like spiritual holiday where there's this person who's called the teller and the teller comes and tells this story and the story is always about the start of one of the, the big miracles that kind of kicked off the age of miracles that they're living in. And <laughs> Jenny is like not, she, she decides to go to work on, on that day instead of kind of taking the whole day off. Um, and when she's at work, she falls asleep. Um, she works outside with what are called guardians, which are like statues that represent the miracles, and she falls asleep outside of the statues. She doesn't really know why because she wasn't very tired, but all of a sudden she just does. She has this really trippy dream, um, and in the dream she's like, no, you're not looking for me, you're looking for my daughter, and she's like, what? Because she's divorced and has never had children, like, is not sexually active. Um, <laughs> so it's... It, it's weird and so she goes back and her whole hive is mad at her because she skipped this really special like spiritual holiday um, and then it turns out that she's pregnant and she basically was knocked up by a dream um, <laughs> this is interesting the rest of the book if you can the first 50 pages is like the weirdest part because um, it, it's setting up a lot of the kind of origin story of the Age of Legends or whatever it would, you would call it that they're living in. Um, and Pollock doesn't like tell you that she's telling origin stories or tell you that she's telling these like myths. They're just kind of woven in throughout the story where all of a sudden it'll kind of shift from the modern story or the contemporary story and go back to the origin tale. And then it'll shift back and forth and back and forth and there's no real clear delineation <laughs> um, so it's it's hard to get into in that respect um, it, it, the, like I said after the first 50 pages it, it becomes a much smoother transition when she goes back and forth between the two and you kind of are ha you kind of get a sense also of what's going on um, it's not really clear at first what she's doing I think what I liked about this book the most was the way that it engages the idea of fate and the idea of bodily autonomy. Um, so the whole story is kind of 
Jenny struggling against this like supernatural force that has impregnated her and kind of like she and she finds out that the supernatural force that has impregnated her has also kind of I don't want to say convinced but like made inevitable other people making choices to lead up to the point where she's at um if that makes any kind of sense um and so Jenny's struggling with the idea that she had no control over what was going to happen that this was something that was not just fated for her but was basically fated for her entire town and her whole life um which really undercuts the idea of free will right and so she goes and she starts doing things like she tries to get an abortion and miracles happen that prevent her from having the abortion and she you know she tries to go to the doctor and you know she is directed to a certain doctor who gives her specific advice over the course of the book she's just realizing more and more that she has actually no control she has no control over her body she has no control over her life she has no control over her own actions and she's increasingly frustrated and rebelling against it um, and I thought this was a really interesting topic to engage. Jenny herself is an interesting character because she's very much that person who um, who wants to be in control, who's kind of like, she, it seems like she's given up, but she hasn't really. What she's really just doing is like waiting. She's like proud. She can't go back to where she started. She can't kind of go and ask her family for help. She's, you know, she's convinced that she's going to do everything on her own. Um, and she's fighting against this this force that won't let her and the pride and the um, the force of will that she displays I think are really interesting and I think Pollock does a good job of showing that um, I think Pollock does a really good job of showing the um, the struggles that you would have with being in the situation that Jenny's in um, both philosophically and mentally and emotionally um, <laughs> that being said, the rest of the book is still super trippy. Um, there's a lot of surrealist stuff that goes on in this, um, that can, I think, be a little bit hard to get your head around, and it can make it a little bit confusing, especially because it does continue to go back and forth between these various origin stories and Jenny's story. Um, I'm not sure that I'm convinced that the origin story that parallels this one was useful in advancing the plot. Um, it might just be that I was not tuning in to some of the parallels that were supposed to be drawn between the two. Um, it, it to me just wasn't like the, the key point, but I really did enjoy reading about Jenny and about her reactions. Um, one of the interesting things about this is that there's a point where it gets really like strangely Habesian. Um, so and Pollock starts talking about suffering and how suffering doesn't exist for anything's sake but its own and how humans are driven by, um, basically driven by suffering and pleasure and how they, you know, they're trying to go between the two and how everything is really just derivative of those and that was a little weird. I wasn't quite sure how I felt about that and it, it felt strange to see it juxtaposed with this like idea of free will and it, to me, philosophically, those two don't really mix. <laughs> um, you know, you you can't be driven by something if you don't have free will. Um, but it was interesting to see, and it was interesting to see um, Pollock kind of work through these issues while she was writing. Um, the story is... It's not like a fast-paced story. Um, but it is engaging and so it feels I think a little bit faster than it would otherwise. It is about a 350 some page book. Um, so it can get, there are some parts where it feels like it's getting a little long, but overall I thought the pacing was okay. Um, I did really like Jenny. I thought the plot was interesting. I definitely liked some of what Pollock was doing conceptually. Um, so it was, it was an enjoyable read. If you have read Unquenchable Fire, please let me know what you think about it because this is the kind of book that like it's meant to start conversations and I can tell and I want to have that conversation with you. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic reading week. I'm going to go make some tea because it is raining and I'm so happy <laughs> um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.